and welcome to my Karitathon vlog. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. It is Monday. It is day one of Karitathon and oh, I'm just so excited for this week. Um, yeah, it is currently, it's actually pretty late on Monday. Um, today has been kind of crazy. Um, I had work all day and then after work I had the most amazing, oh my gosh, the most amazing event. Basically this year we launched the Create-a-thon speaker series and so we are doing three different speaking events with authors and I'm so excited for all the ones that we have planned but tonight um, was with Mary H.K. Chue and Kat Cho. And if you missed that conversation, I highly recommend going and watching it. It's over on Chloe's channel. Um, it was just such a beautiful conversation. Um, I was honestly just floored by the generosity of like their time and their openness throughout the, 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 the event um, to just talk about, you know, all these different issues affecting like the diaspora Korean experience um and it's just yeah it was just an amazing amazing time um and yeah definitely an out-of-body experience it was so cool um so that was amazing and we have another one tomorrow which is on my channel um obviously by the time this is up all of these have already happened but you could still go watch the recording um and tomorrow is with Axio and June Her. um and so I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of the books that I'm going to be reading this week obviously I did post my TBR nothing's really changed since then um but I have added on the girl who fell beneath the sea so yeah, I've been reading The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea uh, as an audiobook and absolutely loving it. It's so, so beautifully written. It's so like whimsical. I love the like world that she has created and the ways that she's like pulled from Korean mythology. Ugh, it's just beautiful. I love it. So The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea is basically about Mina whose homeland has been like ravaged by disasters for many, many generations and they sacrifice girls to be the sea god's bride in the hopes that one day there will be like the true bride and then all the um, disasters will stop and so another girl is meant to be sacrificed and but it's a girl that Mina's brother is in love with and so she volunteers and basically sacrifices herself in order to save her and then she gets swept off into this journey in the spirit realm and it's really beautifully written so far um, and I'm loving just getting to know the characters and like having things unravel and I'm just loving like getting to explore all the different like mythologies that um, Axio weaved throughout the story so yeah really enjoying that one gonna continue with it and i'll keep you posted what i think about it but then outside of that these are the books that i'm planning on reading um so a little refresher for my video we've got the red palace which is a mystery set during the chosun era in korea then we have when you trap a tiger this one is a newberry award-winning um novel following a korean american family it's a middle grade and i think it's gonna make me cry uh, then we have a poetry collection. This is Sky, Wind, and Stars. And then we have Winter in Sokcho, and this is the group book. So that is my, those are my reading plans for this week. My big plans for tonight are to eat this big bowl of cherries um, and read more of The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. And then I have like some work that I have to do. I want to do some prep work just for tomorrow in general um, for like my work work. And then I also um, have to like make my thumbnail and the actual event for the live tomorrow so I can email it over to the authors. So I'm going to do that. Those are my big plans tonight. That is my day one for Karitathon update. I would love to know down below if you all participated in Karitathon, what you read, what you thought of your books. Please let me know. We can discuss. But yeah, I'm going to continue reading and just doing all things that I have to do tonight.
hello my loves so it is the next day i just got off of work and i'm very excited because i am about to have my live um chloe and i are about to host another live this one is with axio and june her gonna be discussing korean mythology and history and fiction and i think it's gonna be amazing i'm so excited i'm currently just refreshing my notes and getting things set up in the live stream and yeah i'm just very excited for this talk It'll be really good. Trying not to be nervous. I always get so nervous, um, but trying not to be. Um, as far as my reading, um, I'll be honest, I did not touch a book last night. I did my work and then um, tried to go to bed and then had a bout of insomnia and then scrolled on TikTok and then eventually fell asleep at 3 a.m. Um, and then woke up this morning and it was a struggle. It was a struggle in general. So it's a little bit later. Um, we had the live with June Her and Axie O and it went wonderful. Um, it was so much fun. I love just getting to talk like Korean dramas and fantasy and history with both of them. So that was amazing. Like genuinely this event is such an honor to host and to like to actually get to meet these authors who have written stories that I've loved and whose work I respect and adore so much and that has meant so much to me as a reader and a Korean person and that's been amazing and just seeing you guys and how excited so many of you are with your the books that you picked and you know watching people discover like Korean authors or new Korean authors and it's yeah it's it's honestly it's such an honor and it's so overwhelming but yeah tonight i'm actually not feeling very well i have have a bit of a stomach ache and i think i'm just gonna like get cozy in bed and read um i'm either going to read sky wind and stars which is the poetry book or i'll start winter in sokcho which is the group book i'm kind of feeling poetry tonight i feel like i'm just in you know i'm in a kind of emo mood i'm feeling very chill i'm a little bit nauseated <laughs> so that sounds like the perfect time to read some poetry hello friends so it's actually a couple of days later it is friday to be honest i've just been focusing a lot on work these past couple of days and just like life has been kind of crazy anyways it's friday very excited for the weekend all of my karitathon plans tonight is really exciting though because um we are interviewing francis cha it's our final event in the karitathon speaker series and yeah i'm very 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 excited um because obviously she is one of my favorite authors of all time i if i had your face is just means so much to me so very very excited for that but yeah i'm gonna come on over to my desk and get ready wanted to talk a bit about how my reading is going so i am almost done with axio's book um the girl who fell beneath the sea and i am absolutely in love with it it is so whimsical and wonderful and amazing and yeah i just it's fantastic outside of that i am also about halfway through the um poetry book that i'm reading I let me grab that actually so I'm halfway through sky wind and stars and really loving this one so far um, I think this is the first time I've ever like cried during a introduction or forward in a book but it basically the in the forward they talk about um, the author's life and the hardships that he faced and his poetry like you can really feel like his love and heartbreak for his country um, and yeah it's just it's amazing to read and obviously it's hard i feel like sometimes to read poetry in translation because so much of poetry relies on you know the sound of words together and like dublin tundras and things like that and it's sometimes hard to get that in when you have a translated work but regardless i am loving reading these poems and i'm so glad that i picked this one up because it is such an important book in 
Korean literature. I either want to start The Red Palace or Winter in Sokcho. I might do Winter in Sokcho just to, because that is the group book, and I want to um, obviously make sure I have that one completed. I'm just really excited to read this one, but I'm going to get to it regardless. And I also just got a very exciting package in the mail. It is Once Upon a K-Prom by Kat Cho, um, and this is her upcoming book, and it's a contemporary, and I'm so excited for it. It sounds super, super, super cute. Basically about this girl's childhood best friend becomes a K-pop star and yeah I love that <laughs> so I think that'll be really fun very excited to add that to my TBR it is 540 so I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the live because that is kicking off in like just a few minutes and just like that the live with Francis is over that was amazing um, I adore her she's just phenomenal and obviously if I had your face one of my favorite books in the world so it was really amazing to get to have that conversation with her and just talk about her story and just like Korean media and stuff so I loved that a lot, a lot. The conversation was great, it went really well and that was our final event for the Koreanathon. Um, I really loved getting to have these, like have, getting to have the speaker series and there's so many Korean authors who I still want to interview like Ellen O. But yeah, today has been such a big day. Reagan and my Korea trip actually went live earlier today and I was going to mention in here like, oh yeah, if you want to go, like it's live. Because in no, in my wildest dreams, I did not think it was going to sell out in an hour, which is what it did. I'd like, I thought it was going to be weeks, months <laughs> before like the trip was actually like confirmed, let alone sold out. Um, so that happened this morning, um, which is bonkers um, and so exciting. I'm so, so, so excited for this trip. I, it's going to be amazing. I've actually never been able to go to Korea for my family. Like I definitely grew up well below the poverty level and like going on any sort of like travel, traveling excursion trip, just impossible. Never going to happen um, <laughs> when I was growing up. Like that was just some, not something that we ever did. And my mom, my mom hasn't been back to Korea since she was 20, since she immigrated. Um, and a lot of that had to do also with like her immigration status and, you know, fears that we had around that. And now that she has her citizenship, that's something that we really want to do is like try and um, just get her to go places. So I think we're going to do a little something like before or after the trip um, with her also and then we'll have the trip with everybody and that'll be so fun it's just basically gonna be like I feel like the most magical sleepover <laughs> of my life because we're all just gonna be in like a hotel together and like traveling Korea so and like all the different experiences that we're gonna have just sounds so cool um and I, I do feel really bad that it sold out as fast as it did again I had no idea that that was gonna happen um but if you aren't make sure you're following me over on Instagram because there is a possibility that we're going to do another trip somewhere else this summer. So if you're interested, be sure to be following me on Instagram because that'll be the first place. And also if you did miss the Korea trip and you were interested in going, there is still a wait list. So if someone, if a spot opens up, the people on the wait list will be the first ones to get um, priority to be able to get one of those spots. So anyways, package in the mail. So I was going to do a little unboxing. Um, it's from ASOS. I saw these shoes on there that were basically a dupe of these mock I think it's mock and mock shoes that are beautiful and I've wanted for a while but they're just like out of my price range and also I was excited because these ones come in wide fit which I have a, a wider foot so that's nice and they're a lower heel so I'm hoping that I won't die in them so let's try these on oh my gosh are these not just like the ultimate princess shoe Oh, I love them so much. I just went and walked around to them and they fit super comfortably. I really like them and like they're the right length, but just weirdly these are too long. So I don't know. I don't know if that's something I can fix. I feel like it's something a cobbler could adjust potentially. So, and then I got a couple other bits. So let's see. That's adorable. I love that. Perfect. So I got that and then I got these cute rings because I have been just wanting to add to my ring collection. Little hearts, little heart rings. I'm most excited for this pink one but it was like a two pack. Perfect. Oh my gosh that's so cute. Hello. So 
Um, I'm going to make my sundubu, uh, which I'm very excited for. Um, it's <laughs> quite a bit later. It's like 930 now. Um, I've honestly just like been, after I do any of these like interview sessions, I feel like I then have to just like lie in bed staring at my phone for like an hour or two. It's like I just crash afterwards. Like I, <laughs> like I put all of my like life energy, like I'm in panic mode. I'm just trying to like sound like a normal person. And so then as soon as it's done, I'm just like, vroom, <laughs> you know, like the, the robot shuts off. So yeah, that's basically what I've been doing for like the past couple of hours. <sighs> okay, devastating news. The So do I make Cindy Boost from, from scratch? Absolutely not. <laughs> so I use this mix that I buy from the Korean store. It's delicious. Like honestly, it's so much better than anything I would ever be able to make. Um, and I just realized that I don't have any more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I gave the last one that I had to my mom because she wanted to try it. I think instead I'm going to make these noodles, which are very yummy. So I will eat these instead. Um, and they're, um, it's kuksu, so it's like cold noodles and they're really yummy. So I will make this and I'll eat this with kimchi. I might make spring rolls to go along with this just because I have leftover peanut sauce and firm tofu. Um, regardless, I do need to cook that tofu. So yeah, sad days, no sundubu. I was really looking forward to that, <laughs> but we, we move on. Yum. It's a little bit later. Um, I ate dinner. It was lovely. The addition of the tofu was a very good call. I was happy about that. I didn't make spring rolls because the noodles were very filling on their own. So anyways, after dinner, I honestly didn't do a ton. I mostly just like sat around on my phone for a little bit. I caught up with my friend Maureen. Um, and then I read a little bit of Winter in Sokjo. I'm about two chapters into it so far. And I gotta say I'm really enjoying it. The writing itself is so dreamy and atmospheric. So the story is set in Sokjo. Um, which is like a seaside town in Korea and it's a tourist destination but it's set in winter as the title might suggest and our main character works at a guest house in Sokjo and one day at the very beginning of the novel this French cartoonist shows up as a guest and it's a very short book I had planned on trying to like read it in one night however I just got hit by like a wave of exhaustion so I think I'm actually going to head to bed but I just finished the second chapter and like I mentioned I am really enjoying it so far I think the author is doing such a good job of like creating this sense of like limbo sense of displacement from just like how she's writing the atmosphere of the story um, right from the beginning, you know, the, the main character is mixed race. She is French and Korean, um, and you really get that sense from her of feeling 
that like displacement, that otherness of, you know, being Korean, but also being seen as not Korean. Um, and then with uh, Karand, I think that's his name, the Frenchman, of also not feeling that like connection there either and feeling that sort of like lack of belonging and, and lack of like ownership almost of a of an identity. It's also not lost on me that the main character works at a guest house which is very much so a place of impermanence, a place of limbo during a time period that is also you know a place of limbo in a place that is a tourist destination so a place of impermanence and I feel like that's such a big, going to be such a big theme in this book, at least from the first couple of chapters. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far and I'm excited to see how it continues. I've heard kind of mixed things from people about it, so we'll see how I get on. But as of right now, writing is definitely a winner for me, so winter in Sokcho. All right, I'm going to now head to bed, so good night. Good morning my loves! It is Saturday and it is disgusting outside today actually. Absolutely disgusting. It is rainy, snowy, cold, oh, distressing. But regardless, I'm going out into the world because my friend Jeremy um, has tickets to go see this show that is basically, it's at the public theater and it is a bunch of monologues written by Asian playwrights so I'm really excited for that. So I'm gonna head out now to go do that. Very intrigued. I really don't know anything else about the show except for that. Um, and then I am hoping to hit up a perfume store in the, in the city because there's like, I don't know if any of you are on perfume talk, but I get a lot of perfume recommendations in my TikTok and I am so intrigued for so many of them. So there's this place called Scent Bar that has like a, a bunch of like all the indie fragrances so I'm hoping to go there and like smell some of the like viral TikTok perfumes so yeah that is my day. Also I'll do a quick little fit check before I head out. I'm wearing pants today which is shocking for me. <laughs> but yeah this is the full outfit today. Um, I have these pants which are from Big Bud Press and then I'm not sure where these tops are from. I think probably like Forever 21 or something and then butterfly clips and these giant heart hoop earring so yeah that is the outfit now i'm gonna go head out for the show So I am home and I had a lovely day out with my friend Jeremy. We went and saw the play Out of Time and this was, or not a play, it was a show um, and it was basically a series of five monologues by five different Asian playwrights and they were all performed by Asian actors. It was also interesting because um, each of the monologues 
uh, was about or was from the perspective of an elder and I thought that was really interesting. It was actually my first time ever seeing something at the public so I was, that was pretty cool for me. Um, but yeah, it was really, it was an interesting show, very thought-provoking. Um, it was also one of the first times where I really um, consumed any sort of media that depicted or discussed the effects of the pandemic. Um, like each of the stories included it in some way or some capacity. Um, not all of them used it like a ton thematically but just like even having it be recognized the stage itself was very barren but i always find that really interesting like the specific staging choices that occur when you are super super limited in terms of like props and things so, like for the first one um it was about a documentary filmmaker and she was like filming herself um so she had like the like umbrella lights like like basically one of those she had a couple of those like around her and she was like telling this story um and then another one uh followed a an indian woman and she was from the future she was in 2050 and the way that hers was staged is that they had a sheer curtain and she was behind the sheer curtain facing um to the left and then um and she was filming also um kind of like kind of like what I'm doing right now to a camera talking to her former self or to her young, younger self and then um, they wheeled out a television and like we watched the live feed and so that was really interesting also um, so lots of just new ideas of like staging and how to tell these stories on stage which I thought was um how many times can I say the word interesting but interesting um and then overall yeah I just I really liked the idea of like having these stories be focused on older Asian people um I really liked that so yeah it was super really cool show um I wish I could recommend it but I'm actually pretty sure it closes in a couple of days so and then as far as my reading is going I am almost done with The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea and I am loving it oh my goodness I will be honest like I usually don't love fantasy books that just start right at the gate with plot. Um, I tend to like ones that like are really slow and um, take a while to um, get to the point where like things start moving um, and this book is like not like that at all. Like the book starts off and you're immediately thrown into the plot. Like um, there's really no build up to her diving into the ocean but I love it oh my goodness like it's so fun so compulsively readable I love the characters I love the world it feels so whimsical so magical um and yeah the characters like <laughs> if you guys watch Korean dramas one of my favorite sort of dynamics in k-dramas especially like the romantic ones or when you have like a group of guys who are friends and then like this one girl who's like tagging along with them basically because they're on some sort of like mission or something like that um and each of the each of the guys has like a very distinct personality and offers something different and that is like what the dynamic of this is like and I like am so like invested in the romance element which is so like that's something that I is always hard for me to like really care about a romance and like just you know to like feel those like butterflies from a book you know like I'll care about a romance but to fully feel the butterflies like that's rare uh and I feel the butterflies like every time they interact I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> so excited for her so yeah really really been enjoying that one my goal basically is to tomorrow finish um Winter in Sokcho and um the poetry book sky wind and stars and then also um the girl fell who fell beneath the sea that's my goal tomorrow um but tomorrow's also an exciting day because um so fun fact about me i don't know how to ride a bike um and i am heading to amsterdam and my friend paloma um and i really want to rent bikes and not in amsterdam i would never I would never try and ride a bike in a city um but basically in the countryside in lease uh we want to like ride bikes and look at flower fields so um yeah I'm gonna go and try and learn a, learn to ride a bike tomorrow my friend Emma is gonna try and teach me we'll see how it goes if it doesn't go well then it's fine I'll just they have like little goat carts or whatever so I'll just do that instead but I really want <sighs> 
to be able to ride a bike but we'll see I like growing up I just like I never really did any activities where I had to take my feet off the ground it always just like really freaked me out so when my friends rode bikes I would just rollerblade um so it was never an issue growing up I'm gonna go do my skincare routine and um I might finish up winter in Sokcho tonight actually but I'm gonna go do that do my skincare routine and head to bed so I'll see you tomorrow all right y'all today is the big day it is the day when I find out can I ride a bike or should I just give up? <laughs> Don't be nervous, you're doing exactly what you are doing before. Yes, yes, yes. That was it, you had it going. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, there you go. Just keep coasting, you're doing great. That was great. Hello friends. So yeah, I had such a fun time with Emma today learning how to ride a bike and I got pretty far I think. We were only going at it for like two hours and she was honestly an angel <laughs> and so patient with me and was just wonderful um, and so was Jake uh, who also came and helped out and I definitely by the end felt so much more confident on a bike than I've ever felt before. Obviously I'm not an expert. I am hoping maybe I can fit in a little bit of extra practice and be able to you know at least stay upright I think that's my main sort of fear factor with it is I just like I'm so nervous about falling um and that's just gonna I I feel like that's just something that if you don't learn when you're little then it's a lot harder to feel confident um when you're older um it, maybe that's just me but yeah I'm just I just need to be able to get through <laughs> get through the day on a bike so i'm hopeful for myself we'll see how it goes anyways i wanted to come on and just wrap up this vlog because it is the end of karitathon sad days but ugh, i just love this event so much and i always feel really it's just like really exciting to see how excited other people are about it and this year i feel like it was bigger than ever and it was amazing to also just like see like writers also excited about the event too um yeah it was just amazing and such an honor I did not read quite as much as I had hoped to um you know it was just it was a busy week you know running a readathon having a full-time job life stuff in general so yeah I didn't get to read quite as much as I had wanted but I finished uh the Girl Fell Beneath the Sea, which wasn't even on my TBR for the week, um, but I just, oh, I got so into it and I couldn't put it down. Um, so every time I, I was able to read, I, I picked, I ended up picking that one up and I love that book so, so much. Um, definitely recommend checking it out. And then we have Sky, Wind and Stars, which is the poetry collection. Um, and I really enjoyed this one also. I thought it was beautiful um, and a heartbreaking. I really, really loved this one and I'm glad that I finally picked it up. Um, and then Winter in Sokcho by Elisa Schwa du Sapin. And I really, really liked this one also. Um, I I definitely don't think it's going to be a novel for everyone. Like, this is one that I would say, like, yes, I would recommend it, but, like, with caveats. You know, it's a very quiet novel, and it's a novel that it doesn't so much as, like, it doesn't hold your hand at all, and it doesn't, 
it doesn't really tell you anything <laughs> like you're just sort of witnessing stuff and it just sort of suggests and you have to kind of come to your own conclusions um both like just with with the entire novel and also at the ending um and i really loved that i thought that was so fascinating to read and i loved you know that our main character we never get her name she never tells us her name she never tells us her emotions we just kind of have to make our own inferences as far as how she's feeling based on her actions throughout the novel and I thought that was like really well done because it's like that sensory deprivation and so like without that it almost like heightens the emotions and I just felt like this was such a visceral depiction of loneliness and you know at its at its core I feel like that is what the author is trying to get across is the loneliness that this main character feels and this like outsiderness that's like innate to her being um and I think a big part of that comes from you know being mixed race and really struggling in Korea with being seen as Korean um multiple times throughout the book they, there are people who will not speak to her in Korean despite the fact that she will talk to them fluently but then also it was super interesting like getting the perspective of what it would be like to live so close to the border um of North and South Korea and also just like I really loved there's this one part in it where um her and Karand are having this conversation and they're talking about Normandy so he's talking about Normandy and he says I prefer the beaches in Normandy colder emptier with their own scars from the war and then she says a war that finished a long time ago he leaned against the railing yes but if you dig down far enough you'll still find bones and blood in the sand and then she replies please don't make fun of us I don't know what you're talking about. I'd never do that. What I mean is you may have had your wars. I'm sure there are scars on your beaches, but that's all in the past. Our beaches are still waiting for the end of a war that's been going on for so long, people have stopped believing it's real. They build hotels, put up neon signs, but it's all fake. We're on a knife edge. It could all give way any moment. We're living in limbo in a winter that never ends. I just, I love, oh my gosh. I feel like that's such like a like essence of the book too it's like so much of this book is about like living in limbo living on the edge of something but never getting to like be fully there and I feel like everything from her like her being mixed race to where she lives to you know being on the border of North and South Korea and like that experience of you know the the ongoing conflict between North and South Korea and then to have this like outsider come in and like try and perceive that and try and understand that and depict that and like how he can never get it you know like he'll never get it and oh it honestly it blew me away it's not super plot driven it's it's just sort of an observational book but I feel like I just felt I just felt like I got so much out of it and I really really enjoyed it so yeah I thoroughly loved Winter in Sokcho and would highly recommend it if any of that sounded interesting to you and I'm really happy with my reading this week even though it, I didn't read as much as I wanted to read and I definitely am planning on still picking up um, the other two books that I had on my TBR and so many more Korean novels this year so yeah thank you all so so much for hanging out with me for this video if you participated in Koreanathon thank you for participating and I will see you next time. Bye!